Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another 45 Drives Tech Tip. Today uh, we're going from a user submitted question, so thanks Matthew K. Uh, he wanted to hear about a survey of the tools that we could use on a Stornator or a collection of Stornators to present it in S3 service. Um, if you haven't saw the first video we did where we talked about the other end of this, where uh, what kind of client tools you can use to access your S3 stored data, uh, go check that out. We'll put the description, uh, sorry, we'll put the link in the description, not the description in the link. And uh, let's get into it. So the S3 API, uh, first authored by Amazon and now implemented by a bunch of different implementations. We've talked about this before, but this is everywhere in our world now. It's pretty much how a lot of the internet uses S3 and all kinds of things like that. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is what happens if uh, you're a company or a developer or something who needs to use some S3, but your data volume, uh, like your amount of data you have is kind of makes Amazon a little cost prohibitive or say you're a developer who already has a Stornator or another uh, storage server who just needs some S3 APIs to test their code against or something like that. What, what tools could you use to, to get that done? So um, I'm gonna go over two of the main tools that we love, um, kind of for big setups and then just for single server kind of testing and production stuff. All right, so the first one I'll talk about, I've talked about it a lot, I say it almost every video, Ceph. Ceph does S3 really well through its Rados Gateway, its RGW service. Um, as always, though, Ceph, Ceph's big, Ceph's great for whether you need local S3 for your corporation, your company, or if you want to do a, provide a service to end customers as well. Ceph does a wonderful job of implementing their, of implementation of the S3 API, very close parity with the feature set that true, pure uh, AWS S3 gives you. Um, so as always, Ceph does everything, does it really well. But again, it's kind of on the bigger side, right? If you just need a quick um, S3 service to test your code, or if you just have a single server, you need to present some file system data as S3, um, I'll move on to tool number two, Minio. So Minio, or Minio, depends how you want to say it, um, is a quick and dirty tool to uh, convert file system to some S3 data. Uh, you can cluster with them, but very simple, you can just turn an existing single storage server you have and present it as S3 API, uh, through an S3 API. Um, when I say quick and dirty, please know that I don't mean dirty as in it's just kind of hacked together. It's a pretty solid production ready tool. What I mean by that is compared to Ceph, which is an awesome S3 API implementation as well, um, it's just got a very quick learning curve. And uh, I actually wanted to show that to you guys. I was just going to hop over to my desk, do a little screen cap, just how easy it is to spin up a, um, a Minio layer on top of your file system, whether you're running Linux or whether you're running uh, FreeNAS. All right, so we're looking at a 45 drive Storinator and our Minio install script. And I'm just going to go how easy it is to get started with Minio and uh, start using S3 API storage on top of your Storinator. So, um, right now we've got a Stornator running CentOS 7, also works on FreeNAS, but we're showing CentOS 7 right now. I have a ZFS um, uh, volume created already, and I have my mount point that I created for uh, Minio, mounted at Mount Tank Minio. So, um, here's a script on the right side of the screen. This is in the description below, um, the link to it. And I'll just walk you through real quick what it does, but it just creates Minio user, downloads the... Uh, Minio binary and place it where we need it to be. Creates the uh, basic Minio config file. Um, this is notice the actual path to your data that you want to share. So for you, those using it at home, uh, be sure to update that to your correct uh, path that you want to uh, share out via S3. Um, uh, we're setting the permissions accordingly. Minio likes to have full ownership of the data that's in its directory. That's why uh, if you have existing data on your server, it's best to make another ZFS data set and uh, upload files through Minio that way, whether it's through an S3 uh, API tool like S3 Command, Cyberduck, or through the uh, Minio UI that we're about to look at. And then the script, getting back to the script, the script creates a systemd file so it's easier to start, stop, manage Minio and just enables the service, opens the firewall port. So on this server, I've already run this script, I've already installed, I've got my ZFS, so let me just restart the Minio server, make sure we're starting fresh, and uh, I'll show you the status. Cause So 
this is the IP of my machine here so I'm gonna just right click open and if you noticed here it gave me my default passwords uh, minio admin and minio admin so we can change those with the config file but for now so this is your basic minio browser um, I'm going to make a new bucket so let's just call this new bucket and uh, let's put a file in it so this is a file local on my machine here uh, great I got a picture of Joe Exotic let's upload that why I had that I don't know yeah see and then we can get a little demo of it right there wonderful um, very cool too if we go back to the terminal um, mount tank minio this is where I said there's our new bucket and there's our picture that we uploaded so for those needing s3 api you can now reach those with any old s3 command uh, cyberduck or anything so you can get started with your s3 immediately yeah so that's how quick you can spin up um, mini os3 api on top of a uh, file system whether you're in centos or freenas and um, again this is no means a comprehensive list of all the different kind of tools you can use to do this. There are others. Um, it was Scalady's S3 server. I think it's called Zemco now or something like that. But really what I wanted to get at uh, is those are the two tools we love to hear, use, love to use here on our Storinators. Ceph, uh, really feature complete, but a bit of learning curve. Great for starting relatively small and growing massively infinitely to the exabyte scale all the way down to Minio, which you can just spin up well as quick as you just saw there. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. Matthew, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the idea and um, see you guys next week.